particularly important for both these teams. Pitt at 5-5 five and five in the ACC, Georgia Tech at 5-6, and six. and for Pitt, this would give them a chance at just their second quad one win of the season. Georgia Tech coming off a heartbreaker that we just showed you on the pregame on the road at Little John Coliseum on Friday against Clemson. And Pitt turns it over out of the gates. And as we know, Mike, with Georgia Tech, it starts with identifying what defense they're in. We're going to see a lot of different ones. A 1-1-3 one, one, turning into a man-to-man -man in possession. They'll play some 1-3-1. One, one. You have to identify what they're in. They're so good at turning teams over, and part of it is the confusion, not knowing the defense. Saw a lot of man from them on Friday against Clemson, and we just saw the starters for Georgia Tech as they turn it over on their first possession. They've got Khalid Moore, 12 in the old white throwback uniform. He gets a start today for Bubba Parham, and I know you think, Chris, that's just simply a matchup thing against Pitt. Yeah, assuming Josh Pastor didn't say anything, so assuming it's not disciplinary or health related, you know, I think the, the physicality of that perimeter for for Pitt more perhaps a better matchup than Parham. The starters for Pitt remain the same. Xavier Johnson and Ithiel Horton along with Tony Champagny and Koulibaly in. It's Justin Champagny to start the scoring one minute in. And that's where he's best, close to the basket. It's not like he can't shoot a perimeter shot, but there he had a great matchup on the smaller Alvarado and just went right to work. And now Pitt, meanwhile, they haven't played since Saturday in Charlottesville when they lost by seven at the hands of the Cavaliers. They had their game against Louisville postponed into midweek. And Jeff Capel was telling us last night that if they had played early in the week, Justin Champagny might not have been able to play because he's bothered by the pinky finger on his left hand, something he had surgery on going into last year as a freshman. It came in aggravated coming off the Virginia game. And so with some rest this week, he's able to play as right scores for Tech. Champagne gave it up to find Abdul Kareem Koulibaly, the sophomore from Mali. Jordan Usher into the paint for two. We're tied at four early on. It's a Georgia Tech team that has not shot it well in their last two games. Only 9 of 40. They've become very reliant on that shot. But not having shot it well, Mike, you, you'd like to see them attack Pitt off the bounce early to try to get some momentum at the basket. Now, well, this end from the outside, it's Xavier Johnson who doesn't shoot it all that well from deep. But a second chance opportunity with Koulibaly underneath. And the tip is there for Johnson. You know, you mentioned, Mike, that these teams have a lot of similarities. T two areas where they're not very similar. One, Pittsburgh takes a lot more free throws, but, but two is the offensive glass. Pittsburgh, 13 offensive rebounds a game. A big reason why they scored. A nice drive there by Alvarado. He's looking for a bounce back effort after missing the free throws with eight seconds left against Clemson on Friday. Typically an excellent free throw shooter. Josh Pastner said we're trying to infuse confidence in him and pick him up. A guy who just leaves it out there on the floor for his team. Ithiel Horton from long range, and he's been shooting it well recently. The redshirt sophomore in the Delaware transfer. And they've needed. They've needed his shooting because it's not a team that shoots the ball real well. They don't have anybody who is designated to do that except for Horton. Alvarado threw it out on the baseline and a Georgia Tech turnover. Four minutes in. Jeff Capel's team on the road up by three. What's in Zach? Allow Clemson to beat you twice. This is a game at home, and this is a Georgia Tech team that has to finish strong here down the stretch if they have any aspirations of making the NCAA tournament. 
And the thing is, Chris, they don't have a lot of time to stew on these games. I mean, a, a game Wednesday that they lost against Virginia, led for a good chunk of that game, led for more than 30 minutes on Friday, but with the way they're going right now, it's just one day rest, and then they're right back to work. Champagny with two more for Pitt, coming out of the timeout. He's got an early four. You know, I don't know exactly how to describe Justin Champagny other than to say he is best when he's a shark. Meaning he just keeps moving. He keeps circling. It, you know, you don't have to necessarily run stuff for him. He finds the ball. And guys are so good at looking for him. koulibaly has got the rebound this time. I, I like that, Chris. And, and I've heard coaches say this year, you just kind of need to match his energy throughout the game because, like you said, the activity is constant from him. I was talking to Tim O'Toole, Jeff Capel's assistant, about Champagny. He saw him early in the recruiting process, and he went back to, to Capel, and he said, I, I just don't know how to describe him. Like, you're not going to run a lot of stuff for him on the offensive end, but he, he plays so hard. He's an incredible rebounder, and he's going to get better offensively. He's a guy that's, he was a center his entire life. He's essentially been playing on the perimeter for about 13 months. His first three was last November. You know, so he's, he's figuring out how to play this game of basketball completely different than how he did in high school. And we were chatting with, with Jeff Capel last night about it, and he said, in this day and age, the way basketball is at the, the lower levels, the younger levels, I should say, you got guys who've been dealing with this sort of attention since ninth or 10th grade. Well, this is all new for Justin Champagny. As it is on the court, teams are being really physical with him, and he's seeing a lot of double teams. As Alvarado comes back, draws the foul, and will go shoot a pair. Hey, Tuesday, we'll have a women's basketball matinee for you. Noon Eastern right here on ECC Network and the ESPN app. It's Miami who is in action just before our game. Squaring off with Georgia Tech, currently in third place in the conference behind Louisville and NC State. A terrific job for head coach Nell Fortner. We talked about the Brooklyn connection between these guys. Champagne at one end, Alvarado at the other. They had locked horns in the high school ranks as well, and these two guys fuel their teams. We got a three-point margin in these first six minutes. Xavier Johnson on the drive draws a foul. Xavier Johnson, another of those guys who he's kind of feast or famine, but when he's good, he is really good. A guy who wants to score, you know, and, and that's sometimes to his detriment. You know, sometimes he's got to play a little bit more within himself, but I, I love the tack that Coach Capel has taken with him. You know, he benched him a couple games ago, and, and I give the kid a lot of credit. Xavier Johnson, in the game he was benched, first time he hadn't started a game in his career, he comes out and gives him 32 instead of sulking and complaining about the coach, and the coach has an agenda. Xavier Johnson rose to the occasion, and they need him. They need him to play within himself and score and take his offensive opportunities when they're there. And boy, you're right. When he is at his best, both ends of the floor, he is a whole lot of fun to watch. It is foot on the gas pedal, and it's not going anywhere. Alvarado had a tough shooting night on Friday. Back iron on that one, and Adi's Tony has the rebound. Quiet start for Tony. Tried to dump it off for Champagny, but Usher got his hands on it. from Koulibaly on Rodney Howard. And Adis Tony to the rack. Draws a Howard foul. It's a Georgia Tech team that doesn't turn it over a lot. Only 10 turner, turnovers a game in conference play. They already have five. And it's a pit team that at times can struggle to score in the half court. You, you give them runouts. 
and you allow these guys to well tony doesn't there but you allow them to see the ball go in the basket you know you give them some run out some easy opportunities yeah i liked how you phrased that to, to jeff capel when we were talking yesterday and you know what's the identity offensively and he pointed right to what you said getting steals like that or coming off of rebounds and typically you're going to convert at the line with some of the top players scoring wise on the pit team and then in the half court you're going to see a lot of ball screens from pit A turnover on the pit side so five each in the first seven minutes and Bubba Parham can't convert Tony off the screen into a tough two and Georgia Tech surrounds the rebound Well, when we chatted with Josh Pastner this morning, he said we are going to have to go deeper. He was thinking maybe it's more like eight guys, and that is certainly not the norm for Josh Pastner and Tech. But true to form, they are going a little deeper here early on. You didn't believe him, Mike. <laughs> you were dubious. <laughs> Mike Monaco said no way he's going into his bench. And look at Josh Pastner shoving it right in your face in the first eight minutes of this game. You know, one of us, Chris, knows quite a bit about basketball, and it's not the guy sitting at home. It's the guy with the great face shield refurbished after it had a mishap on Friday. A week or so ago or a couple weeks ago, I'm losing track of time here. Louisville, Clemson, and Pitt here today, all three of those teams had a week off in preparation for Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech did not have a week off. And so we are in a year where that's, you know, these schedules are so differential between teams. You know, when it comes to NCAA tournament, and this is a much bigger, broader issue, Mike, but when it comes to NCAA tournament, we, we cannot use the net rankings this year. If it's only you listening to me, Mike Monica, we cannot use the net rankings this year. Noted. They are a complete mess and not reflective of the disparity in these schedules. Mitch Barnhart, he's the, the chair of the selection committee. Dan Gavitt, they've been talking as well. And, you know, they were discussing things yesterday. And, and Josh Pastner has made the point that, hey, the first two games of the season, those losses to Mercer and Georgia State, he has pointed out that those came when they were not practicing contact. Those were non-contact practice weeks for them at that point in the season. So he has said he knows others might not agree with it, but he thinks that should be part of the discussion too. A hard foul. Moses Wright commits it on the Femi Odukali drive. Femi Odukali, another Brooklyn native. Brooklyn goes hard. <laughs> the young freshman, you know, slight of build, but he does have that New York mentality. He is not afraid to attack the glass. 6'5", only about 185 pounds, but has steadily gotten better, and he's I think he's benefited by being with some of these veteran guys in this lineup. He misses on the first. Hey, Wednesday, it's a loaded day. Four games of men's basketball, starting at noon with this Georgia Tech team hosting Boston College, then at 4.30, NC State and Pitt, followed by Syracuse and Louisville, Duke and Wake Forest to close it out right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Oda Cali, though, just a 44% free throw shooter, misses both, and Moses Wright with the transition slam. What a year Moses Wright is having. He's averaging 16 points, seven and a half rebounds per game. And Pitt now has been scoreless for over three minutes, but Koulibaly with another offensive rebound. Xavier Johnson on the reload, and he ends the drought. It's a funky release. You really don't think it's going in, and it really hasn't at a high percentage. Only 26% from three in conference, but he believes he should be shooting it, and he can get it going. Well, so does Moses Wright. 20% from three for his career, but better this year. 33%, and he drills that one.
Shot clock below 10. Johnson tried to slip that underneath, and he found Will Jeffress, who got fouled. And then Johnson and Usher are barking at one another. And these are two of the most expressive teams in the conference. And if you're coming into this one thinking you like the, the stoic, strong, silent type Tony Soprano's view of, of Gary Cooper, well, well, this is not the one for you. <laughs> A little bit of posturing, a little bit of, I'm not going to really fight you, but I'm going to act like I want to fight you. <laughs> we'll square off. Nothing really going to happen. We're the you tougher got, team than you. You got fire all over the place from guys like Usher and Alvarado on the Georgia Tech side. Johnson for Pitt, and he gets tagged with a tech here at the 932 mark. And they're going to get Usher with one as well. So now because of that, Usher's up to two fouls. Still shaking his head as he goes to the bench. Jeffers, the freshman from Erie, PA, is good on both as Champagny returns with Pitt ahead by three. Similar teams like we talked about, both led by a big three, the two highest scoring trios in the ACC, both around the 500 mark in ACC action and in need of bolstering their NCAA tournament resumes here, sitting in the middle of February. Khalid Moore got trapped in good hands from Koulibaly, and it belongs to the Panthers. Koulibaly does a really good job. He's gotten significantly better moving his feet defensively. He's become a much better help defender. Jeff Capel was telling us last night we just really need his defensive energy when he's out there as Khalid Moore fouls Champagny. And Koulibaly's given him a big boost in that regard. We're at the midway point of the, the first half here, Chris Matola. We got more combined turnovers, 13, than made field goals, a dozen. Odukali around the corner. And another turnover. That is eight of them now for Pitt. Moses Wright has seven to lead Georgia Tech. And Moore hits a three, and we're level at 18. How about Khalid Moore? Only three of 20 from three in conference play. And again, he buries it. The non-shooters coming out here today in Atlanta. Whoa, Moses Wright went up to meet Femi Odukali, and with two hands, he pinned it. It's a big-time play. I mean, he comes from the foul line backwards to make that play. It's a guy, Moses Wright, came late to the game, picked it up late because he was a tennis player growing up. And, you know, I actually think his tennis playing, Mike, has helped him. I think it's helped his footwork. He's very good in reacting. It's helped his lateral movement. They're a very good example. And fitting with the tennis team, I've heard you describe him before as bouncy. Very bouncy. He went up on the offensive glass trying to handle the Kyle Sturdivant miss, and Moses right a little slow to get up. The corner kick for Tony. Hasn't been shooting it all that well recently. And it's Georgia Tech basketball on the other side. A little physicality flaring up in this one. Tied at 18. Syracuse and both of those matchups. Because they're a really good passing team, a high assist team. Josh Pastor going back to the man. Oh, 
he's talked about it for years that he'll go with whatever's working the best. He, he likes that he has multiple options and forces offenses to have a couple things at the ready play call wise as Bubba Parham tracks down the miss. And Michael DeVoe is still scoreless. Johnson got stripped, and Jose Alvarado gets possession for his team. How fun is that matchup of point guards as Alvarado gets the advantage that time? There is no back down from Jose Alvarado. Everything about him says New York guard. He's fearless, plays with tremendous confidence. Remember before the uh, before the Louisville game, I was asking Chris Mack to describe him. He said he's like heavy metal music. He said Carly Jones is like jazz music. Jose Alvarado is heavy metal. Now oh, we got Jay Z. We've got a couple genres of music. We've got a tie up, and the arrow does favor Georgia Tech to keep it here at this end. Uh, he's from, you know, he's from Brooklyn. I mean, the thing you need to know about people from Brooklyn, you're going to know they're from Brooklyn in the first 30 seconds of the conversation. I mean, you know how that goes. Oh, no doubt. And Alvarado knows that he has an effect on players as well. He, he will willingly admit that he knows when he's getting under an opponent's skin. Xavier Johnson was actually talking about it this week. Craig Meyer had a great article in the Post-Gazette in Pittsburgh. And Johnson saying, I know I'm going to have to maintain my composure out there against Alvarado as Horton clears the miss. But Johnson's on the bench with the two fouls. Good entry to Champagny and then good hands from Tech. Who's on the floor but Alvarado getting to the loose ball. That's where Tech is at their best. Conversion on the ball. And a really good job by Khalid Moore to get a hand in there and deflect it without fouling. They do a really good job in their zone, converging when the ball gets to the paint. And you thought Champagny had a clear layup, should have had a dunk. And all of a sudden, he had three guys around him in a split second. He had four points early on. Again, he's the ACC's top scorer at better than 19 per game. But he's been quiet since and looked like he might have been flexing at that left hand that we mentioned earlier as he took that ball out of bounds. Horton, a very tough contested three, and Alvarado just sneaks around Koulibaly. Points have been at a premium the last few minutes. Right, slip free, and nearly threw it down. Just a wing ball screen, and Koulibaly stays. You know, they're trying to, they've got that sideline over there, so they're doing a hard show, and they're staying with the show to kind of pin them up against that sideline, and no rotation from the backside. A good find of Moses Wright, and when he goes to the basket, he is bouncy. Like moon bouncy, Mike Monica. Yeah, sure is. The senior from Raleigh, North Carolina. Jeff Capel was saying to us that we got to limit his touches. And he's the guy that has taken the most field goal attempts on this team, and so they, they want to do their work early on him. Limit his touches before he gets the ball. Try to take him away that way, but they did find him off the screen. And he's given Georgia Tech its first lead of the afternoon. Koulibaly can step out. Tried to Nick Honor that one home, and here comes Wright. DeVoe slashing to the cut. His first points today. And a pit timeout. And a pan that looks just like new. They're even up and safe. Pitt with it out of the timeout with Georgia Tech on a 7-0 run. And you see the drought offensively for Pitt with Xavier Johnson on the bench with two fouls. It's been exclusively man-to-man -man from Josh Pastner. And it's been effective. You know, it's been effective because, you know, Pitt's a team, again, they've played really well against zone. Because they can see, you know, they have space and they, you can you can move and cut. 
here, Georgia Tech forcing guys to do a lot individually. Good entry that time, and this time Champagny converts. He's got a half dozen. Parham got some space, and he drills it. First points for Bubba Parham today, coming off a dozen on Friday at Clemson. Trying to attack that man of Georgia Tech once again. Johnson blew a tire, and turnover number 10 in the first half for the Panthers. It's that three from Bubba Parham, and he's aggressive to shoot the ball. I actually thought he, he may have gotten fouled on it, too. Got hit on, on the arm as he shot it. Transfer from VMI. I, I thought he was adjusting all season last year. Did not have a really good year, and, and that happens a lot with, with transfers, especially a transfer who took a ton of shots. I mean, he, he was a leading scorer, took a ton of shots in his time at VMI. Figured out who he is offensively. We just know he's capable of putting up good numbers. Same with Tony and Johnson, but they need him to put the ball through the basket. And he's not necessarily a guy that you run a lot of stuff for. It, it doesn't seem in, in chatting with Jeff Capel that he's going to find some points in a similar way that, that Champagny does as they throw up the lob for Moses Wright, getting it from Alvarado and Tech's up by seven. Well, what they need to figure out now is their ball screen defense. That, that's what's killing them. If, you only got 20 points. Okay, fine. Let's figure out our offense at halftime. But we got you got to get some stops here if you're pit. Xavier Johnson is on the bench. He has six turnovers in the first half. Pitt only has seven made field goals as a team. Jeffress underneath drew a foul as he got encompassed by the Yellow Jacket defense. And those guards are operating out there and Moses Wright finding himself loose and free again. And that's the one guy when, when he starts making that beeline to the basket, you have got to identify Moses Wright. So Chris, you mentioned ball screen defense for Pitt. We saw it once earlier with Koulibaly when Wright went to the basket. That time it looked like Terrell Brown was the big in the ball screen defense. Is it on the big? Is it on the guard? Who's who's to blame in that situation? It's usually on a guy they call the tag guy. So that's the guy off the ball who's taking the roller. You know, I think what Jeff Capel's trying to do, because Alvarado is a little bit smaller, only about six feet, they're trying to bottle him up in a ball screen and make that pass tough. Alvarado pretty savvy, but the back end of your defense has to respond and, and find Moses Wright. Well, Wright's made him pay at times, and there's turnover number 11 for Pitt, which has also missed six of its 10 free throws here in the first half. Good extra pass from Alvarado to Parham, who spun it out. Not a standing around on this yeah, they, end of the floor for the Panthers. They just don't look organized. And Odu Kali kicks it away and 12 turnovers in 17 and a half minutes for Pitt. It's a Pitt team that had lost four or five after the win over Duke. They had the big win last Wednesday against Virginia Tech, who was ranked 16th at the time. Only a seven-point loss at Virginia this past Saturday. But a layoff since then because of the COVID impact on the Louisville side of things and a lengthy layoff coming into this Sunday matchup. He went up to get it over DeVoe, missed the shot, and Alvarado secures it.
DeVoe a transition three. And Tony Skies for the rebound. Tony straight back the other way to the cup. His first points today. And they got to try to get more off missed shots. I, I try to push. You know, guys like Xavier Johnson, Artie's Tony, they're much better in space. Pitts had a real hard time scoring in the half court in this first half. Oda Cali earns a tie up with the arrow favoring the Yellow Jackets. We said this earlier in the game as, you know, Pitt, when they can start, you know, that's a tie up there. The play before that, you get a, you get a run out. You know, when they can start creating some stuff in the open floor for their offense, that, that's where they become much better. Only two fast break points for Pitt in this first half. Alvarado lays it in. Another lob and another turnover. Odu Cali and Tony just can't sync up. It's either been a poor pass on that play or they haven't been able to finish. Clearly, that's been their most effective offense or at least their best opportunities in the half court in this first half. They just haven't been able to complete it. Just eight made field goals for Pitt in the first half to go along with 13 turnovers and four of 10 from the free throw line. Tough pass into traffic and Pitt bails him out with a foul. You know, part of it too, Mike, is Georgia Tech makes you work on your defensive end. There's a lot of side to side ball movement. They make you work deep into a possession. And that's going to have an effect on your offense. Mm -hmm. This is the second foul, by the way, on Justin Champagny. With about a 12-second difference between game and shot clocks here as we wind down the first half. Alvarado went up top for right on the reload with the left hand. Koulibaly denied. Alvarado got it off. And Georgia Tech will take a nine-point offensively to facilitate some better shots. What, what does that look like? Is it is it pass and cut? Is it ball screens going against Georgia Tech's man? How does that manifest itself for Pitt? Well, even on this first possession, right? He's got you got some dribble handoffs, you got lateral side to side movement of the ball. And Pitt does have Xavier Johnson back in. They adjusted the turnover count from the first half. It was 12, as Chris told you. Five of them from Johnson, who also had two fouls in that first half. But he's back in there. After Pitt put up 22 points in those 20 minutes, sitting at 5-5 five and five in the ACC, and trying to get here today what would be just their second quad one win of the season. And Georgia Tech has the nine-point edge. Even there on that last possession, the ball sees both sides. You get good movement, but you come up with a bad shot. I mean, that's not a good quality shot there from Audis Tony on that last possession. And then it's Tony who picks up the foul outside the three-point line. Well, Moses Wright had 13 as he took a bump and a foul from Koulibaly. I know you liked, Chris, what he did offensively, but he was really active on the defensive end as well in that first half. Yeah, they were hard to score, and part of Pitt's struggles, it, it was hard to score at the rim in that first half, in large part because of Moses Wright being so active. Had two blocks, he had a steal as well. It was a quiet first half from this guy, Michael DeVoe, with just two points. Champagny hit the deck. Moore hung on to it. Usher out of the corner. Side of the backboard and a shot clock violation. Hey. Jeff 
Capel was not happy with how that, this possession has started here for Pitt. Just a lot of standing. Johnson off the crossover. Offensive foul. Johnson has a propensity to pick up those, and so that's three fouls, 90 ticks into the second half. Xavier Johnson waits too long. This passes now, and he waits an extra dribble to, to kick it out to Thor. I mean, Horton, he's there. He's open. And, and you know, again, Z Xavier Johnson just trying to do too much, trying to get too deep when the pass is there. It's an easy basketball play. Wright got the lob from Alvarado over the top, and the lead is now double digits for Georgia Tech. I told you, Pitt hasn't played since last Saturday. And they have come out slow so far. Adi's Tony with a welcome sight. He connects from deep. He had been one for 11 from three in his last four games coming into today. Alvarado in trouble. Good ball pressure from Johnson and Koulibaly was there on a double. And Moses Wright turns it over. Transition three for Ithiel. Horton is down, and back-to-back -back triples were much needed for Pitt. And that's where Xavier Johnson's at his best. He is strong, and he's really fast end-to-end. -end. So when there's space, and you have space in transition, he can be really effective, a really good pass there. Moses Wright on a rack attack. He has been a monster in this game. He's just violent when he goes to the rim. Right, with 17. The margin is seven early on here in the second half. Johnson with some contact, no whistle, and a nice streak to the cup from Xavier Johnson. DeVoe back the other way. Got Horton to hit the deck, and DeVoe dropped it in. I mean, I, I don't know what happened there. I, I don't know if the official thought that was a flop, and if he did, then we have a, a rule now that can rectify that. I mean, I, it looked like a charge on the floor. I thought he was there in legal guarding position, and I thought DeVoe just ran him over. And then it looked like some sort of conversation, Johnson and Champagny with the official there. And now there is definitive contact, definitively a foul. And they're going to get it on Jose Alvarado. Of course, that rule came into effect, what, a few years ago, in large part because of what happened to Isaac Haas with his elbow. And mention this going to break. Not the right elbow that got locked there for Alvarado, but you go back to the end of his freshman season, right around this time, it was the middle of February, and he suffered a, a dislocated elbow. So he knows what that's like. So Alvarado made it hurt. The lead is nine for Georgia Tech, four minutes into the second half. Cody Cali is on Alvarado. Now DeVoe, who's sitting on 999 career points, and Mike DeVoe will have to wait. Well, there's been a discrepancy in first half versus second half for these teams this year as Khalid Moore will get hit with the foul. 
So this is the second half field goal percentage and where these teams rank in the ACC. You see on the first line, both these teams top four, and then both these teams top four in improvement from the first half to the second half shooting the basketball. But if Pitt's going to have those types of numbers, they need this guy at the foul line to start playing. He, he has been largely quiet. I think he's kind of gone through the motions to this point in the game. I mean, he's only taken four shots, and he's made three of them. He's got to he's got to be more aggressive, and they got to look for him. He, he's got to be a factor here in the last 15 minutes. Pitt showed a little token pressure there and backs off. Alvarado turned the corner and got by Terrell Brown. He is so good at his size, well, really for any size, at just squeezing that thing in there. That's on Terrell Brown. It's going to give it back to Georgia Tech. Yeah, Alvarado is a whole lot of fun to watch. He is, man, and it's a really good first step. Again, the ball screen there, and to Terrell Brown has no chance because once... Alvarado gets that thing extended. He's so good at finishing it with a really nice touch. Here he is again navigating, and he tried to kick it. He thinks it was deflected as he tried to kick it to the corner. Josh Pastner doesn't look too pleased with the call. Well, in any event, it's been a nice bounce back effort for Alvarado after he was held to single digits on Friday. We told you about the missed free throws down the stretch. He also didn't have an assist or a steal. Just the second game in his career where he didn't have an assist or a steal for the senior point guard from Brooklyn. Horton has hit a couple of threes now for Pitt, and it's a tie up, and the arrow points to Tech. You know, I asked Josh Pastner during our conversation with him over the Zoom, mm. do you think Jose's starting to wear down? Hey. Look, he's not a big body. He plays so hard on both ends, and he's playing about 37 minutes a game. Do you think at some point a guy like that starts to wear down? And he said, yeah, I mean, obviously our schedule has a lot to do with that. I don't play a lot of guys. And this young man leaves everything on that floor. I have so much respect for Jose Alvarado. He's got a young daughter, so he's a father too, trying to be a college basketball player, a student. He's a father to his young daughter, Nas. He's just an easy guy to root for. Hey, Tuesday, we'll have a special women's basketball matinee for you. Noon Eastern on ACCN and the app. Miami and Georgia Tech squaring off as Tech looks to bounce back from back-to-back -back losses. Well, to your point, Chris, I, I loved when you were asking Josh Pastner about maybe getting Jose Alvarado a break. And Josh Pastner agreed with you, but his definition of getting Jose Alvarado a break, he said maybe one or two minutes here or there. Infield Horton getting involved for Pitt here in the second half. Khalid Moore off the shot fake. Nice shot from the mid range. He's got five in a really good shot fake. One of the simple pleasures in life. A, a very good shot fake, Mr. Spatola. That was the only way you were breaking loose in your little uh, <laughs> schoolyard pickup games was to multiple shot fakes. Well, the guy right now who's cooking for Pitt is Ithiel Horton. His guy, Xavier Johnson's fired up on the bench with the four fouls. And, you know, you got to say, their offense looks better without Xavier Johnson on the floor. I mean, it's just the reality. Oh, good hands by Adis Tony On the run out, Tony went up and got fouled by Moore. Second out, 
So when the ball starts going in the basket, it's amazing what it does to your defensive energy. And a really heads-up play there by Audis Tony to get the pilfer from behind. Third foul on Khalid Moore. Tony 69% from the free throw line. And he has struggled at the free throw line. He's missed all three today. But to your point earlier from the first half, Tony got the, the pilfer, as you said, and he's as good as anyone, I know you think, in this conference defensively. Yeah, you know, most guys, Mike, they'll play with great energy on one end or the other. They're going to play with a lot of energy and lean into the offense or vice versa. The thing I respect about Jose Alvarado is he plays with the same energy on both ends. He's getting ready to come back into the ball game as well with Georgia Tech ahead by four. Moses Wright driving. Tipped around, Tony secures it. Tony on the drive to the basket, and it's a two-point game. Defensively, Jeff Capel's gone to a little pick it up here. Three-quarter court pressure back to his zone. They've gotten some stops. And Audis Tony has gone on a little run here. And Bubba Parham puts an end to it. Tony with the turnover, not on the same page with the post entry. That's been a real trouble spot for Pitt. And then Tony picks up the foul beyond midcourt. So that's two on Tony. It's been a struggle offensively for Pitt all day. But if this guy, Ithiel Horton, can get it going, he's been their consistent offense. He's wet from deep. <laughs> Go pro at Subway for double the pro. In the second half, Horton, you see, since the break in the last eight and a half minutes, he's got 10 himself. And somehow, despite matching an ACC high with 16 turnovers as a team and not getting much from Xavier Johnson, it's a five-point game, Chris Matola. Big offensive rebound underneath from Moore, who draws a foul and will head right back to the free throw line for Tech. You know, it's been so low possession, and obviously it's a game in the 40s that, you know, you can kind of stay within reach as, as poorly as Pitt has played on the offensive end and, and as poorly as they played at times defensively in the first half. You know, in a low possession game, man, you can always stay within shouting distance, and here they are. Khalid Moore just 61% at the free throw line. Junior from Queens, and he connects on both. Better angle on the post entry to find Champagny and among the trees, and he spun it out the window. And did Champ Penny just get teed up? We call it on Ithiel Horton. And there's Champ Penny attacking. And then Horton turns to the official. You could see him in the back of the yep. screen there. He turns to the official and says something. And obviously, the official took exception. I think the, the amateur lip reading there was him yelling, and one. Uh, and if you're Jeff Capel, I, I think you're saying, man, that yeah. that's that gets him attacked. It's a little bit of a, a sensitivity there on the official's part. I mean, come on. Wow. These arenas, though, man, they're hearing everything. You know, yeah. they're they're hearing. Sometimes you just can't look the other way. Jeff Capel was making the point to us that this is really the first time that Pitt has played in front of fans. They've got approximately 1,200 at Georgia Tech home games, 900 of which is students. 
Mike Bray was singing the praises of what the atmosphere has been like at McCamish Pavilion this year because of that. A nice shot fake from Bubba Parham, but he missed from the elbow. Foul away from the ball goes on Bubba Parham. We're not going to set a, a time trial record with this one. We've had a lot of stop and start here in the second half. Draws the assignment on Ithiel Horton. Lost the handle. Shot clock winding down on the freshman, Will Jeffress. Koulibaly's got a hoist. And Champagny, the offensive rebound, and a fresh 20. And tipped away right to Jeff Capel. Jeffress not really looking to score. I, I thought he had an angle, a drive. And he's going to check out. 17-year-old freshman Will Jeffress gets replaced by Adis Tony. Shot clock is winding down on Ithiel Horton. He's been the guy for Pitt in the second half. DeVoe came away with it off the miss, and a held ball will keep it with Pitt. Try to stick with Horton around the screen and Horton that's all he needed for space to hit another And Jeff Capel's going to him That play right there designed for Horton to come off get a shot. He didn't get it at first credit Alvarado But a really nice job creating the space to get that shot off Another tie-up gives it to Tech How about Ithiel Horton redshirt sophomore from New Jersey Spent his freshman year playing for Martin Ingalls via Delaware. Averaged 13 a game. Had to sit out as a transfer for Pitt last year, and Ithiel said he felt like he was trapped not being able to play all year. A lot of guys can relate to that. The old way of the transfer. But boy, he's playing well for the Panthers tonight as Wright scores for Tech. On the baseline drive left it short usher is in all sorts of pain mm. i didn't see it yeah, hard to tell exactly what part of it on the landing on the right leg somewhere. But the facial expression told the story for Jordan Usher, a senior from Canton, Georgia, and the USC transfer. So Kyle Sturdivant replaces Usher. Khalid Moore found a soft spot in the zone, but missed it from three. And then Alvarado goes right up against Koulibaly. I mean, he sees a little bit of orange on the basketball, and he's going to snatch at it. He is tough. I mean, he just sticks his nose right in to 6'8", 215 pounds. 
and says, that's my ball. I, I loved, Chris, the quote from Jordan Usher earlier this week. He was talking about Jose. He said he would cut off his fingers to help win us a game. I mean, it, it might hurt his ability to grab loose balls like that, but that's what Alvarado will do for this Tech team. Late shot clock scenario for Pitt with Tony probing but not finishing. Wright got to it on the baseline for more. This feels like a crucial spot in this game with the lead at seven. Can Georgia Tech stretch it? Can Pitt trim the margin? Nice. Right at the rim. He's got 22 today. And really good zone offense. Hit that short corner. Moses Wright does what he's supposed to do. Cuts right to the basket, right to the front of the rim. Good offense. Cali finishes. He knew Alvarado was behind him. And Pitt goes to man-to-man -man after that zone score by Georgia Tech. Better ball screen D that time from Koulibaly. Horton stuck on DeVoe. Parham bounced it for more. Behind the back. Good help from Odu Cali, but this is Parham. Rebound Odu Cali. Horton's calling for the ball from Odu Cali. Tony wanted it. He's got a size advantage on DeVoe. Champagny turned to the inside and finished. Plus the foul for Justin Champagny. Wow. ACC Network crew with you. And this pit offense has come to life out of the break, Chris. It has. You know, we made that point earlier. They have been much better in the second half offensively. Ithiel Horton... I think ignited this offense. We'll see if this guy at the line after that monster dunk, if he could come alive and carry this thing home in the last six and a half. Takes a good step in that direction with a friendly bounce to cut it to four. By the way, for Georgia Tech, it's a sprained right ankle for Jordan Usher, and he is doubtful to return. That's the official word, but certainly doesn't look like he's coming back in. He's got the right leg stretched out, top left of your screen on the baseline, ice in the ankle. Back out for Michael DeVoe, who misfires. Tony clears it. And that's big, because they're going to miss Usher's defensive energy. Obviously an offensive threat, but, but his defense... They're going to miss that here down the, down the stretch of this game. Well, Khalid Moore did an all right job that time against Champagny, forcing him into turnover number 17 for Pitt. Sub six to go, second half. Two teams in the middle of the pack in the ACC, so similar in how they're constructed and with where they sit in the NCAA tournament discussion right now. Outside looking in, according to Joe Lenardi. Shot clock is winding down on Kyle Sturdivant. He's got to get it up. Left it short. Rebound to Koulibaly. been terrific in the second half. Tony wants it. He's not getting a touch. Now he does from Koulibaly, and Tony got it to go while falling down to the floor. Well, he was really calling for it because he had Alvarado. I mean, he had the matchup there and the size advantage. He wanted that ball badly. Turned over out of the corner. Johnson tracked it down, and we're tied at 55. This defensive adjustment, the three-quarter court back into the 2-3 zone, and then throwing in, sprinkling in some man-to-man -man has really put Georgia Tech's offense on its heels, although that'll 
That'll change things. Michael DeVoe, a deep three from the logo to reach a thousand plus points for his career and put Tech ahead by three. It's sort of what Pitt's doing defensively. A lot of what Georgia Tech does, because they can change defenses, Josh Pastner likes to think that he keeps opposing offenses guessing and just unsettled with the extended pressure, some of the zone, like you said, and sprinkling in some man for Pitt. Tony commits a foul. So that is 10 team fouls on Pitt as DeVoe stepped out for this one, Chris. He is feast or famine. Quality. Not turning it over and getting a quality shot every time down. A game that for so long felt like Georgia Tech was in control and that Pitt just could not figure out has morphed into a real back and forth physical battle here in the second half. Georgia Tech by four with Mike DeVoe trying to make it two of two at the stripe, and he does. So it's a five point margin. Pitt trailing by that with a chance at what would be quad win, quad one win number two of its season. And Georgia Tech in this brutal gauntlet of a schedule trying to hold serve at home. Ithiel Horton. The tip not there for Tony somehow. They recognize the defense and then good hands from Koulibaly to pry it away from Moses Wright. Really good hands. Johnson, that's where you said he's at his best. He found Tony who missed it and follows it up this time to cut it to a one possession game. It was a great dime from Xavier Johnson, but how about the second effort? You know, he missed the tip in the play before. Tony missed that first shot. Nice job staying with it. Much like Champagne, he's just always around the rim. That second bounce from him. He's got 12 points and nine rebounds in this one. Shot clock winding down now on the Yellow Jackets. Sturdivant had it taken away. And then Alvarado backtracking on Johnson. It'll stay with Pitt. Now, I, I don't know exactly what Xavier Johnson was doing. I, he certainly wasn't at full speed. And, and you're fortunate if you're Georgia Tech. He gets it back here. Alvarado is all over him. Johnson spinning through that Ooh. contact. Are you kidding me, Xavier Johnson? The degree of difficulty on some of these pitch shots down the stretch, Chris. Really tough. I mean, there is no better on-ball defender in the ACC than Jose Alvarado, and he gave Johnson everything he had on that. I mean, that's a circus shot. Great touch off the glass. It has not been Xavier Johnson's best day, but he comes up with a big basket there. And you talked in the first half, Chris, about the way Jeff Capel has coached him and how despite what happened to him in the first half and early in the second half, he's having a good impact down the stretch here these last few minutes. And that's why he's got him on the floor, you know, in part because you have to. You have no other option. But also, he trusts him. He believes him. Even, even in games where he hasn't been his best, and he definitely hasn't been today, you know he can come up with a big play. And he's a junior. Yeah. DeVoe made both three-point game. DeVoe took it away from Koulibaly. That's not who you want to have the ball in the, at this time. You see 18 Panther turnovers. Parham out of the corner. Yes, sir. I mean, he's wide open at this point in the game. If you're Justin Champagne, you got to close out. That's got to be a hard closeout. He kind of lollygagged. 
Just a bunch of lollygagging. They've also run Ithiel Horton off some pin downs. You know, maybe spring him for a three and then go hard to the offensive glass. Pin down a half dozen. Johnson off the ball screen, lost it on the way up. And they get a foul of Mike DeVoe. <laughs> You know, this is not a high degree of difficulty play here. I I don't understand, as he fouls out, I don't understand what Xavier Johnson, I guess he lost the basketball. But that's exactly what they wanted. You know, you got the high screen, the, the paint is wide open. You got to grab the ball and go up to finish that thing. And he fouls out, like you said. And Mike DeVoe is a perfect 5 of 5 at the free throw line today. Georgia Tech as a team is 16 of 18 at the line. And they shoot it at 72% from the stripe for the season. It's a 7-0 run for Georgia Tech after Pitt cut it to one. Odu Cali now. Tony banks that one in. Well, you get lucky sometimes. But any of these guys who would catch it here in this spot for Georgia Tech can make a free throw. Oh, they got to take a timeout first on the inbounds. As Mike DeVoe was looking for. I imagine our, our tired legs. Khalid Moore able to run the baseline, inbounds it to DeVoe, who's a 75% free throw shooter. Moses oh, Wright, 70%. Yeah, they do. And he will go shoot two, where he is three of four at the line tonight. Free throws proved to be of such high importance late in the game Friday. Josh Pastner was talking with us this morning how he was still playing through the different situations and scenarios wasn't expecting Alvarado to miss too said he would have liked to have subbed had he made the second just to set things up defensively but right is good on both that time and the lead is seven for Georgia Tech Horton tough shot over right and Pitt just will not die in this one And Ithiel Horton will not die. What a game he's had. Career. But as you said, around him, it's a lot of really good free throw shooters for Georgia Tech. And when there were 40 seconds, you could play it out where the ball ends up in Moses Wright's hands. Now you, you've got less time to operate with and more taking it out. DeVoe trying to get away from Tony and Champagny. And a timeout. You see how we got here. Georgia Tech ahead by four. Pitts had a much better second half. Pitt has overcome the turnover woes to still be in this thing with 20 seconds left. Khalid Moore triggers it in with a risky pass, and they go up and foul Parham with just a second coming off the clock to send a free throw shooter to the line who is 80% in his four year collegiate career. Tech's been terrific at the line tonight. One of 23 for Georgia Tech shooting free throws tonight. They got fouls to give. Mm -hmm. Smart. Take out charges number three. Lamar on the second. 
You know, that free throw line, Mike, you make a really good point. We've talked all night. This was a low possession game. That free throw line comes up big in games like this. Horton has to hoist. That comes up short. Alvarado's got it. With Tech ahead by six. And Georgia Tech, weary from all the games they have had.